And that's like panorama mode. Look at that. It's like a picture of Yosemite Valley that I took. Today. That's pretty cool. All right. Here we got a thing. You know, let me stop. Look at this from low power. Even before you see anything else, this is a melanocytic lesion. I'll just tell you that's a little pale, but there are nests of melanocytes here. Do you think it's benign or malignant? Okay. Does anyone think it's malignant? I think it's malignant because I looked at it last night on high power. But also, yeah, what, what about it? It's broad. Yeah, that's one good clue. See, it's, the, it's cheating, but I do all the time. If my derm that is not like somebody who's a, a first year resident, they might go down to the fat with their shave and it might just be a nothing, right? But if an experienced derm gives me a broad shave, I'll look again if I don't think it's, I'm like, why are they so worried about this, you know? And so, yeah, when I see a big excision or a wide shave, I'm usually know that they're freaked out about it. It's asymmetric. This area looks very different than this. And that is not always proof of melanoma, but it is, and you got to really worry if you see asymmetry side to side. That saved me several times where at, at first glance, I didn't think about it. And then I was like, oh, it looks really different over here than there. And I cut deeper and it's because there's a melanoma growing out of a nevus or something. So do some deepers if you can't tell. Here, thankfully, we don't have to do that. We just got a high power and see the marked atypia, the, the top of the lesion and the bottom of the lesion. Like it, you can't tell which side's up or down. There's no maturation there. The melanocytes in the epidermis are nested here, but with pagetoid cells, okay? And over here, look too, more pagetoid. Now, how do I know? Let's see if I can pull this off. Probably not. Every time I try, there's only one of the artifacts that I need in any given section. That's a fair thing. And the reason that you're thinking that is because there's a lot of cytoplasms in the cells. They're kind of big and epithelioid, and they're making big nests with clefts around them, okay? But I don't like all that pagetoid. You can have some pagetoid in the middle of a spitz, but a spitz should be nice and circumscribed. I guess you could argue it's circumscribed there. To me, this is too asymmetric. We got a ton of host response. There's some almost regression-like change, lots of inflammation. Um, again, it's patchy and spread out. Spits should be usually real symmetric, very sharply circumscribed. But it's, I, I think that's actually a good uh, take home. I often will look at a melanoma and think, am I sure it's not a spitz? Because it's one of those things, if you don't think about a spitz, you will go straight to melanoma. That's what Sophie Spitz did, right? Back in the 40s. She looked at these things in kids and said, these are melanomas of childhood. Because until you know spitz nidus is a thing, nothing about that lesion looks benign. This cells look wild. And then only later he found, well, these, these kids do well. And actually most of them seem to be fine. And that's where I think it's an important point of history to remember that it looked atypical enough that it was published by a good pathologist as melanoma of childhood or something like that. And later proven to be benign with follow-up. So I think it's always good to think, is there any way that I can get out of a malignant diagnosis here? Is there any benign thing? Because that way you don't overdiagnose people with cancer. And I definitely think that spitzoid things can look a lot like melanoma. So that's actually a really good take home. And there's plenty of times I think about it and then I'm like, oh, they're 80 and they're Sunday. It's probably not a spitz, okay? But it's good to think about because if you don't think, you'll just, you'll just blow right past that idea and you'll go straight to melanoma, okay? Same with reed nevi, which people think are probably a variant of spits. You'll go right to like moderate or severe dysplastic and you'll get worried because they're big cells and there's bridging. And then once you're like, oh, it's a young woman and it's a dark spot and it's real circumscribed and you're like, oh, I guess it's a reed nevus, isn't it? So we don't have a reed nevus today, but you can go look them up later. All right, so anyway, the one thing I was gonna tell you before I got off on that tangent is vacuolated cells in the epidermis, it can be hard to tell apart keratinocytes from melanocytes, right? And I think the one nice trick that I like, it's a little hard because this is faded, but the cytoplasm of melanocytes sticks to the nucleus. When the cells shrink during tissue processing, the cytoplasm all bulges up to the nucleus. Maybe a couple little strands of it will touch the neighboring cells, but there's, because there's no desmosomes to hold it onto its neighbor, okay? Keratinocytes, their cytoplasm is full of what kind of filament? What do they stain for? No. Keratin. Big, huge rope-like filaments of intermediate filaments of keratin. It's like reinforced concrete, rebar, right? It's like all of these huge strands of keratin going back and forth. It's not just there to make it easier for us to do immunostains. That'd be convenient. It's actually there for a functional purpose. And that purpose is it goes across the cytoplasm and it hooks onto desmosomes. And the desmosome hooks onto the neighbor cell desmosome. And that has keratin filaments that go across to the next cell. And that crisscross that times 10,000. And that's why your epidermis doesn't fall apart when you love it. Okay? It's not just because it's got a basement membrane and hemidesmosomes holding it down. The whole network has to be strong. And the reason that's important is that when the cell shrinks, that cytoplasm, it ain't going anywhere. It's stuck to all of its neighbors. And what you get is a naked, sad little nucleus sitting here in a little hole by itself. It's a little halo of nothingness around the nucleus and all the cytoplasm stuck to the outside. It's a little hard on this because it's uh, faded, but I have a basic skin histology video and right around like 
seven minutes or nine minutes into the video, I talk about this. But I think either John Reed or Victor Creato, one of my men, this is not my idea. I stole this blatantly from someone else. I just can't remember which someone else it was who taught me. But it's so useful. And so at first, I think a lot of trainees are like, how do you tell it's a melanocyte? If you see a blob of cytoplasm stuck to nucleus, it's a melanocyte usually. Naked nucleus, keratinocyte, okay? A superficial spreading melanoma. The classic example that you think of as melanoma, superficial spreading. And in reality, I still use the subtypes because our clinicians like it, but it's pretty historical and doesn't really pretend much for patient care most of the time. 